Hey, this is Asaf Levavi from LinkedInRef.com and it's time for another viewer request. And in this video, I'm going to teach you a finger style arrangement I've made especially for you guys and girls based heavily on Chet Atkins' beautiful arrangement of Morning of the Carnival or Mania de Carnaval or Black Orpheus as it's sometimes mistakenly called. That was the movie that the song appeared in. Uh, now... First, I'm going to play it for you so you can see and hear how it goes, and then we're going to break it down lick by lick with tabs on the screen as usual. This lesson was generously donated to all of us by Joan and Ellen. So thank you, Joan and Ellen, and congratulations for your 50th anniversary. It goes like this. Okay, so this beautiful composition is a spectacular example of jazz composition. Why jazz? Because even though this is a Latin piece with a Latin rhythm and a Latin feel, it's still a jazz composition because the chords lead into each other in a jazzy manner. Um, it employs the 2-5-1 technique. We're going to discuss all of it later. We're not going to get into it right now. First, we'll learn the melody. but. All of the chords lead into each other using the same method. That's how ingenious this composition is because it's so simple chord progression wise and yet it's so creative with the melody and how the melody builds upon the chords. So we'll see how it goes and I'm gonna explain everything, I'm gonna try to explain everything as we go along, but first you do this. Okay? You play the open E string, and then you bar the 5th fret on the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd strings, and play the A string along with it. Okay, but this is not the chord you're using. This is the chord you're using. Okay, you add the pinky on the 8th fret of the E string. So you have 8-5-5, five, five, and the open A string. So, open E string, and A minor. This is A minor. Okay, that's the first lick. Now, the rhythm of this piece is this. Okay, but you never have time to play the entire rhythm. Um, you always have just a little bit of space uh, between the, the ending of one lick to the beginning of another. So here you have this. Okay? You see where the rhythm comes in? Um, you play this lick, and then you can do this. Okay? Just play strings two and three twice. That's all you have time for. Okay? And then you play 7 and 5 on the E string. You're still borrowing the 5th fret. Okay? And then you put your pinky on the G string on 7. 
and your third finger on seven on the E bass, okay? And you get this chord, okay? Five, five, seven, and seven on the bass. This is B minor seven at 11. I'm not gonna go into chord theory in this lesson, okay? So you just have to trust me. And then you get this. Let's forget about rhythm for now. Let's learn the melody from start to finish and then we'll insert the rhythm. Okay? So that's what we have so far. Then we play this. Okay? Which is basically E to E7. Okay? Why is this? You play four and four on the E and G strings. Okay, the first and third strings with the E bass. Now this is an E outline because if this is D, then this is D sharp and this is E. So, okay, we're playing this. And then we slide it to seven and we play that, so it's Okay, and this is an outline of E7 because there's an E7 over here, A7 shaped, and we're only playing strings one and three. So, it's this again, so, okay? And then A minor. You play strings one, two, three, and five, and then you play the rhythm, and then you play this. Okay, this is B half diminished or B minor 7 flat 5. Okay. Um, it's let's go from string 2 to 5. On the second string, it's 3. On the third string, it's 2. And then it's 3 again. And then it's 2 again. It's 3, 2, 3, 2. Okay. Or from the bass note up, it's 2, 3, 2, 3. Okay. First finger for the bass, then the third finger, then second finger, then pinky. Okay, so this is a half diminished chord or a minor seven flat five chord. Same thing, different names. So you play the bass and then strings two, three, and four, and then you play E7. Okay, E7. Um, this is E, you take the finger off of the D string and you add your pinky on three on the B string, on the second string. And you play strings one, two, three, and six. Okay? So you get this. So that's the first line. A minor, seven, five. B minor 7 and 11, E to E7, okay, 4 to 7, and then A minor, and then B minor 7 and um, flat 5, okay, but, okay, this is the lick. B minor 7 flat 5, E7, okay, and then you play this again okay open e string a minor then seven five again but this time you play d minor okay you play strings one two three and four and respectively it's on five six seven and zero five six seven and an open d string Okay, this, this is the button of this chord, okay? So we don't need to bar because we have an open bass note. So it was this. Okay? And then you put on G and you pick strings 1, 2, 3, and 6, okay? Just bar a normal G chord. And then you can play seven on the E string or slide into it. Mm. 
Okay, I prefer uh, I prepare the pinky beforehand, so I put on a G7 shape, even though I'm not picking the D string, so there's no seven. Uh, but I prepare the pinky. Okay, to slide from five to seven. Okay, and then it's C major seven. So it's C without the first finger with an open B string. Uh, so you can even take the second finger off and just put the bass note on because we're not picking the D string again. Um, and then you play strings one, two, three, open with the C bass on three on A. Okay, so it was this. D minor, G, seven, C, major seven. Okay? So what we have so far is this. Okay? Now let's go over the chords one more time, really quick. A minor, B something something, E, E7, A minor. B have diminished, E7, A minor, D minor, G, C major 7. And then you do this. Remember the B minor 7 flat 5 shape? If you don't remember, go get checked because there's something wrong with your memory. Uh, we just learned it. Um, okay, I'm just concerned for your health. This wasn't cynicism um well it was shut up back to the lesson i have adhd forgive me take this shape down okay up musically down physically okay so now you're playing two three two three on the d g b and e strings okay so this is e diminished okay And then you play this. Okay? Which is A bass with 0, 1, and 3 on the E string. Okay? Very simple. Then the D minor chord again, and you pick strings 1 and 4, and then you pick strings 2 and 3. Okay? So it was. So connecting to the previous line, it was okay. Now don't worry if you don't understand what this is doing here. I'm gonna explain everything after we learn the melody. Okay, I said we're gonna learn the melody first, then we're gonna add rhythm, then we're gonna discuss the chord progression and the jazzy composition method. Um, okay. So we were here, okay, now it's this. Okay, so you did this, and then you do, uh, you put on a G chord again and you do this. Okay, you play the bass, then you play strings two, three, and four, and then you play the melody which is three, five, six on the second string, on the B string, okay? Okay, with your pinky for the chord to keep ringing. And then this. You put on a C chord and you put your pinky on the third fret of the E string and you play strings one and five and then you play strings two and three together, okay? So it's... So it was this. Okay? Now we're gonna continue the logic of this line into the next chord. 
okay? This is F major 7, okay? Uh, you put on the bar on the entire set of strings on the first fret, and you put these two fingers, okay? I'm not giving you the finger, I'm just showing you which fingers to play. Um, this, by the way, should be a new symbol. You, you come up with ideas uh, for what. Um, and you put those two fingers on two and two on the G and D strings, okay? And you pick strings two, three, and four, okay? You play the bass and then you pick, okay? So you have one on the B string, two and two on the G and D string. So it's, and then one on the B string again, then three on the B string with your pinky, then open E string, and then this chord. Now what is this chord? Um, technically, you can see that as a D minor chord over a B bass note, D minor over B. And you, won't, you wouldn't be wrong if you call it D minor over B. But in the context of this scale and this composition, this is just another version of B minor 7 flat 5 because this note okay one on the E string is an F note that's just an octave up from this note okay the F note which is here so instead of this F you play this F okay so it looks like this the rest of the notes are the same okay instead of this you play this so um, it just makes it easier for, uh, for first timers, those who encounter this shape for the first time, to look at it as D minor over B, okay? But it's not, it's B minor seven flat five, okay? So um, you put your second finger on the bass, your first finger on the high F, and then you put your uh, pinky and third fingers on the second and third strings. So you get this. Okay, and again you pick strings one and five, and then you pick strings two and three. Okay, so it's... as long as you keep the high F ringing and you don't touch it with your pinky when you put it on. Um, okay, so we had this. And then we play this. Okay. The E7 chord again. And then we play this. Okay, zero, one, three on the B string. And then A minor again. And we pick strings one, two, three, and five, just the whole chord. And then we play this again. Okay, B minor seven flat five and E seven. Same way we did before. Co uh, bass chord, chord, okay? Bass chord, chord. Okay, so what do we have so far? This is the first, the first round of the song. There are two rounds and then there's a C part, which is this. Um, okay, which is a very short part. So this is the first round, so you can say you've learned half the piece, okay? because the C part is so short that you can't really regard it as, um, as a big challenge to learn and memorize because it's really short and repetitive. So there's only the A part and the B part and then the C part is a breeze compared to those two parts. So you've learned half the song. So let's go over it. A minor. No, you know what? Let's repeat what we just learned. Um, e diminished. A bass. Okay, one, uh, zero, one, three on the E string, then D minor, G, okay, bass chord, melody, 
three, five, six on the B string. C with a high G note. F minor, uh, F major seven. Melody. B minor uh, seven flat five again with a high F. E seven. three on the B string, A minor. Then, okay, B minor seven flat five, E seven. So what we have so far is this, A minor, B minor seven and eleven, E, E seven, A minor. Transition, A minor again, D minor again, uh, again for the first time, again for this lesson. D minor, G7, seven, C major 7, E diminished, A bass, D minor, G, C, F major 7, B minor 7 flat 5, E7, A minor, transition. So, now I'm going to play it with the rhythm. So let's discuss the rhythm for just a moment here. The rhythm is very simple. It's just this. Okay, it's bass chord, chord, bass chord, chord. Okay, it's a lot more complicated than that, but you're already playing the complicated parts within the melody. Okay, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, um, when you play the rhythm, you don't have much time to play a rhythm. It's just just hinting at the rhythm between the melody lines. For example, you play the first line. Okay, and then you play the chord twice. Okay, in rhythm. Okay, strings two and three because the melody is on the E strings so you complete the chord on the second and third strings. Okay, and then you move on to the next line. Okay, and you see? Okay. Okay, I added the rhythm here as well. Now, on the A chord, you have an entire half bar to fill, so you play, okay, or an entire bar, it all depends on how you look at the composition, uh, but you can play the, the, the rhythm twice, because you have no melody, the only melody note is this, okay, at the beginning of the bar, so you can play the rhythm twice instead of once, okay, it all depends on how long your lines are and how close together they sit. So you have time here, and then, and then you add the melody, uh, you add the rhythm to the melody, okay? Um, okay, but it's, it's all optional, you don't have to add rhythm all the time, you can play this. to add the rhythm to every lick, okay? Make your own decisions here. Then, for example, you see the rhythm after the D minor was, I don't know, it was just too cluttered in my opinion. Okay, so I'll just play the chord once. On the C major 7 chord you have space for the rhythm. Okay, and you can toy around with it. Or not. Okay, you 
can add the chord. You're already playing the chord, you do this. Um, so you can play the chord again. If you want to add a little bit of rhythm. You can play it twice. Okay, you can... I'm just checking out options here uh, to show you how and where you can add rhythm. Okay, it's the same story with the A minor, the long A minor bar, because again, you all you only have this. Okay, so um, I hope uh, I hope that was clear enough. If not, we're gonna play it enough times during this video uh, so you can so you can get the rhythm in your head. Okay, so we're done with the first part, with the A part. Now the B part. The B part goes like this. Looks familiar? Because it is. It's the same first line. Okay? Exactly the same. And then it takes a completely different direction. It's this. So it's this. Okay? This is an open E string again, but this, this is G augmented. Now, instead of telling you where to put your fingers, I'll just say put a D minor 7 shape on and take it down you have a G augmented sound. Um, but again, it's my duty to tell you where to put your fingers are, so I won't be lazy and tell you to bar the fifth fret all the way up to the fourth string, okay, including the D string. Put your second finger on six on the E string and put your third finger on seven on the G string. Okay, so you have So you have, and then you take your second finger off, play five on the E string, okay, it's the barring finger, so, and then quickly move on to this piece, okay, uh, I don't know why I said piece, this chord, um, bar the second fret up to the D string, Okay, and put your third finger on the E string on three. This is A7, okay? In my opinion, this is the quickest way to put on an A7. Okay, instead of putting on this little contraption with all the fingers on, just using two fingers. So, um, three on the E string, two and two on the B and G strings, and an open A string, okay? So, open E string, G augmented, five, and then three, first time, okay? You play the E string, and then you play the chord, okay? So... Got it? It's zero, six, okay, that's the melody. Then five, three, then A7, okay? One last time. Then it's one and zero on the E string, and then it's D minor yet again, and you play strings one and four, and then you play strings two and three, twice. Okay? So the rhythm is built in. Okay, 
So the entire line was and then it's this B minor 7 flat 5 okay now you have a bar and a half to play with this chord so have a very long time to play around with this chord. So you can either play the rhythm or you can add your own little embellishments, okay? Trust your fingers, just listen to the chord and let them play. Okay? Um, so it's This little melody line starts on the third beat of the second bar. Okay, so it was one, two, three, four, one, two. Okay, again, it's one, two, three, four, one, two. Okay, it's a bar and a half. If you're having trouble with this, just try to picture, um, use a metronome, okay? That's the simplest option. Use a metronome and count along with it. But if you want to hear the rhythm in your head, uh, just use your leg, okay? Move it up and down, okay? Just like this, okay? Just count using your leg or your head, okay? It's like this. I was counting with my head and my leg, okay? <laughs> to each his own method. Um, try it. I know it looks ridiculous, but there's a reason that musicians move their head around. It's like a living metronome, okay? It keeps instant rhythm. So, um, that's the next line. Um, it's three on the B string. You're already there with your pinky, okay? Then zero one on the E string. And then you put a D7 shape on the seventh string. So you have seven, six, and seven. And use your thumb for seven on the E bass. Okay, this is a kind of a B diminished or a half diminished uh, chord. Um, I uh, haven't dissected it yet and I said no theory here, so let's avoid it for now. Um, so it's... Okay, now you can put it like this using your from first string down musically up physically. Pinky first fret up uh, Pinky, first finger, third finger, second finger. Second finger on the bass. And then, yeah, but this is a little uncomfortable for me. I prefer to use the thumb, okay? You have a thumb, so use it. And if you think that it's wrong to use the thumb, Eric Clapton used the thumb, Jerry Reed used the thumb, Steve Morse uses the thumb, everybody uses the thumb. Jimi Hendrix used the thumb, so you can use your thumb, okay? That's the line. Um, actually, that's not a diminished chord at all. That's, um, that's just G7. It's G7 over B. Don't know why I said diminished. I'm used to having diminished chords here, but it's just G7 over B. This is G7 and it has a B note inside so the bass note is its third note, the third note of the chord so it's G7 over B. That's all it is. So okay. So let's recap up till now. Yeah, I'm 
playing the B part, okay? Okay, we don't have to go over this. And then, G augmented, 5, 3, A7, 1, 0, D minor. A bar and a half of B minor 7, flat 5. 3 on the B string, 0, 1 on the E string, G7 over B. Okay, so... A minor, and you play the bass, then strings 2, 3, and 4, then the melody, which is 1, 3 on the B string, okay, you can pick it or you can hammer it on like I just did, then open E string, then F major 7, this time like this, um, you can put it on like this if you want. Okay, it's uh, one, uh, the first finger on three on the D string, and then five, five, and five on strings one, two, and three. Okay? You can put your entire hand there, or you can just double bar it. You can bar the third fret uh, with your first finger, and you can bar the uh, fifth fret with your third finger. Or you can play it like this. Okay? That's an a different option. You can bar the fifth fret and put your pinky on eight on the A string, and then you have okay strings one, two, three, and five. This is F. So if that's more comfortable for you, do that. Okay, that might be more comfortable. And then. It's 5-4 on the E string, okay, and then B minor 7 5, 5 again, but the melody note this time is the open E string, so you play the E string with the A string on 2, okay, and then you play the chord, so it sounds like this, and then E7, Okay, um, again, the bass and then the chord, and then you're on E7, now play strings 1 and 3, okay, open E string, 1 on the G string, then 4 and 4 again on the 1st and 3rd strings, then 7 and 7 again. Okay, the E to E7 line. So it's E to E to E7. Okay? Okay? Then bar the 5th fret on strings 1, 2, and 3 and play the A bass along with them. Okay? And then you can add the rhythm. Okay, so now let's let's play let's play the final line, and then we'll recap and add rhythm, and then we'll learn the C part. So, um, where were we? We were here. Okay, so it was, and then it's A minor, F major seven. E7 A minor Okay So the entire B part You begin the same as the A part And then G augmented A7 D minor G7 
7 over B, A minor, F major 7, D half diminished again, E7, A minor. Now, as I said, you can add your own rhythm, you don't have to stick to this. You can do. Okay, as long as this is your basis for what you play. Okay, as long as you hear in your head, you can improvise picking patterns on that and it would retain the original feel. Okay, so let's add rhythm. Just the simple rhythm between the lines. Okay, now um, let's try a more creative rhythm. fingers play okay the more you let them play the better they'll play okay don't be afraid to take risks with your rhythm patterns okay now for the C part okay and then we'll go into why this chord progression is so good okay this song didn't turn into a jazz standard by mistake Okay, many jazz players like to play it because of its jazziness. Okay, it's a jazzy chord progression. Uh, we're getting close. Let's finish learning this first and then we'll talk about theory. So, um, you're on A minor. Now you play this. Five and seven on the E string. Then you play this. Okay, this is D minor seven. Okay, uh, it's the open D bass with the pinky on 8 on the E string, first finger on 6 on the B string, and the second finger on 7 on the G string. So it's 8, 6, 7. It's this, okay, but again, this is D, so we can use the open D string. So is this chord, it's D minor 7, so, and then 10, 8 on the E string, and then this, it's kind of like the first chord, only 7 instead of 8 on the E string, okay, so it's A minor add 9, right, and then you do that again, okay, you play it twice. 5 7, D minor 7, 10 8, A minor add 9. Okay? Play it twice. Then play 5 7 to D minor 7 again. Then 10 8 again. And then play E7, uh, E minor. Excuse me, I was thinking about the seventh fret. So it's E minor on seven. Remember the D minor shape, just take it up two frets. So you have seven, eight, and nine with the E bass. So it's, and then 10 and eight on the B string. Okay, so it's, you can put the pinky on 10 on the B string and let it go because you have eight uh, with your second finger inside the chord so and then a minor again barring the fifth fret with the open 
A string. Okay, and you can play it twice. Okay? That's it. So, uh, before we go into theory, I just want to say subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Okay, there's a ton of lessons, they're all for free, and you can go download the tab. Once we're finished with the video lesson, you can go download the tab from the website. It's free as well. And if you want to give something back to Lick and Riff, there's a donation button. All donations go back into Lick and Riff into making time to make these arrangements, uh, to make these lessons, to edit them, to upload them, to, um, you know, just make time to do all this. It all takes a lot of work. So I thank you in advance for any donation whatsoever. Uh, go download the tab, okay, after we're finished with this. So why is this chord progression so good? Um, because it's made out of two five ones, okay? It's a series of two five ones. Two five one is a way to lead chords uh, into a certain chord that you want to um, put emphasis on, okay? Mostly the root chord, but it doesn't have to be the root chord. Uh, for example, you wondered what this chord did there in the middle of the line. It served as a two because you wanted to lead into D minor. Now let's go over this. If this is A minor, right? This is A, so it's second chord, okay? If a is 1, then 2 is B, okay? So let's not go into complex theory, uh, into deep theory, okay? But let's just say that you want a B, okay? So you're playing a B next. B. And then you play E because that's the 5 back into A minor because the 2 5 1 the B E A minor chord progression uh, leads perfectly into A minor it primes the ear for A minor it's this okay that's why it fits so well together and it's the same thing with okay with with B half diminished again it's B E7 to A minor okay again A B C D E E is 5 so A it's 1 1 2 5 1 okay that's why the chords fit so snugly together and they seem to lead naturally into each other. Okay, now 251 isn't a jazz invention. It's uh, It appears also in classical pieces, but jazz players and jazz composers really took that into the next level, uh, as you'll see here as we move along. Okay, again, let's forget about uh, chord qualities. Let's forget about the diminished or minor or major or sevens or add elevens and such let's just talk about bass notes okay so you have a on the bass then b then e then a again then again b e a again okay so it's b e a and then d minor now that D minor is the fourth chord for the A minor chord, but it starts a whole new progression. It starts this. Okay? This is a 2 5 1 into C, because if you have C, then you have C, D, okay, that's 2, E, F, G, that's 5. So. If you check it out, you'll see that you're playing D minor, G, C, major seven, and you have, okay, that's why the C sounds so good there, because you led into it with a two, five, one. 
and this is the two for a D minor chord. And you're playing. Okay? You're playing E diminished. A. Okay, it's A. It's you're only playing the bass, but it's it's A7. It's Okay, that was a bit too enthusiastic. Um, okay, so again, two, five, one. Okay? So that's what this chord did there. So, so you have um, two, five, one. Two, five, one. Two, five, one. Two, five, one. Okay? Now this returns to leading into A minor. Okay? Um, but this is going to be a bit more complicated to explain, so just look at what's going on here. It all led into A minor. D minor, G, C, F major 7, and then B have diminished E7 again. So it was kind of a prolonged 2 5 1 progression. Uh, let's break it into 2 5 1s. It's. Okay? D minor, G, C. That's a 2 5 1 progression. G, C, F major 7, that's also a 2 5 1 progression because if you have F, the next letter is G. Okay? F, G, A, B, C. So you have C and you, uh, you have G, excuse me, and you have C afterwards because you have D minor, G, C. Okay? So you use the G and C. As, they're, as if they're a new 2-5-1 progression, okay? This is actually 3-6-2-5-1, uh, but it's an extended 2-5-1 line, okay? So you can treat it as a series of 2-5-1s. Okay, again, I'm really careful, I'm being really careful here not to um, slide into a very, very complex jazz theory um, explanation because this is not a lesson for it. I'm just trying to explain what why this composition works so well. Okay, so Okay, and then and then you use the G and C to lead into F. Okay? And then two again into five into one. Okay, it's it's you're finished on the F, and then you have two five one into A minor again. Okay, and then you play the same two five one again. Okay, so we can go on and dissect the 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 B part as well, but I think you got the point. Okay, again, I don't want to belabor you with too much info, okay? This was a long lesson already. So subscribe to the channel, go and download the tab, donate anything if you wish to give back to Lick and Riff, and go get this under your fingers, practice this, have fun with this. This is a terrific, terrific song to learn, to know, to play, to experiment with. Um, it also opens up your ear um, into two five ones and voice leadings and whatnot. Thanks for watching, um, and I'll see you the next lesson, okay, as usual. Okay, so I'll see you the next lesson, and in the meantime, you go have fun, and thank you very much for watching.